Hello, welcome to another episode of the GNPS. Uh, sitting across me is an old friend of mine. Uh, we go away, way, 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 way back. I know this 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 guy since primary school. Uh, he goes by the name of uh, Patisen Dube. Stain. Other people know him as Stain. When we uh, when we were growing up, I still call him Dube. Uh, he will forever be Dube to me. What's up, bro? I all good. <laughs> <laughs> We're grand. I sharp, sharp. It's, sharp, nice, sharp. it's nice to be here. Well, welcome back. Welcome back to the country, bro. Uh, for people that don't know, you are out in France playing rugby um, as a career. Wow, what a what a, who knew. <laughs> Did you did you think you would ever be in France playing rugby professionally? I didn't think per se that I'll end up in France, but mm. what I always tell a lot of people when they ask me mm. is the fact that my passion took over. Yeah. Yeah, so if I wasn't as passionate about the game, mm. then I would have stopped like a lot of the guys I played with, yeah, like myself, school. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to, I didn't want to mention any names, but yeah, <laughs> like myself. Don't so, feel free to say, hey, man. I'm so a, like, as how it is now, I, I would, I would say, from with the guys I played with, first team in high school, mm. maybe only five are still playing. Active, yeah. So uh, like the Macombotis, yeah. Uh, so I, I see him on on. Facebook. Yeah, so he's, he's still busy. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I, I got lucky last year Yeah. that something came up. Because you, you do get clubs who are interested overseas. Yeah. And then the visa issues. Yeah. yeah that's what breaks everything. Because clubs are like, we can take you in, but now you have to sort out yourself for getting the visa and yeah. all that. But, yeah. Luckily, I got a club that... Uh, helped me up, helped me out with everything, yeah. and then as soon as I went there, it was all up to me. Yeah. So that's why I'm going back for another season. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's 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 go back, bro. Let's go back uh, to the times when I first knew you. Uh, where where did it start for you? Uh, <laughs> but like, okay, you know, la, uh, it's not just me. <coughs> there, there's people out there. Yeah. And the reason you're here, I'm, I'm here. We're here to tell your story. Yeah. And so if you, if you want to rewind, start to speak to them about the band or to participate, Ubani, Ukulepi, Ganjani, you know, Ufi Ganjani. Okay. So I'll take you way back in time. So um, I grew up in. I was born in Ngotu. Mm. Wow, I'm sure you'll be happy about <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, I, when it says, <laughs> no, 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 I'm Grant. even on my passport, everywhere, Charles even jo- my Charles papers, Johnson. Charles Johnson, <laughs> even my papers in France yeah. are written place yeah. of birth, Mutu. It's just there. <laughs> so that's why I grew up, and uh, no, that's where I was born, yeah. and uh, I grew up. Uh, Mfunyane, yeah. that's near Mondlo. Yeah. So it's a rural area. Yeah, that's the line one more. Yeah. Uh, say, I, uh, for you, you know, the others don't know. Say so, but now my parents moved to Newcastle. Mm. So now I'm more based in Newcastle whenever I'm around. Mm. And uh, my mom, since oh, I was born in 91, so mm. my mom, 99, decided to put me in a boarding school. Mm. So I went to Tanaza Primary. So, 99, rural boy, you don't know how it goes, the extra activities after school. Yeah. I just go to school. Uh, uh, Dan- uh, you, you went to Danaza Dan primary, primary School. So why why figure I was often to... Grade 3. Uh, shit. So, you 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 had been Bundu Peshe. Grade uh, 1, grade 2, I was just in a Zulu school. Uh, All I knew shit. was after school, you go play karate. <laughs> 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 Wait, <laughs> let me uh, out it. Man, yeah, but I to very much with my I told you George of Fog. Yeah, well, so I first day, and I told you what for some reason you just very good. And then they put out cool missing kids. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, fine, because like um, to make a perfect example, like now, mm. I'll try to say something mm. and then French just kicks in because that's what I'm busy learning. Oh, yeah. Because it, it, it's at the top of the. Yeah, because at head. the moment, excuse me, my Africans is poor now. Yeah. Because I'm not speaking Africans. Yeah. But I'm speaking more English and Zulu. Yeah. But no Africans. So whenever I try to speak Africans with someone who's Africans, it, there's French. always some French little words that pop up in, in the conversation. I'm like, Shh, I'm speaking French. <laughs> 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 That's not Africans. <laughs> not Africans. <laughs> so um, um, growing up, when I started going to boarding school, mm -hmm. things changed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know how it's like. Yeah. When people are like, uh, oh, he's going to an uh, in English school, now he thinks he's better than the others, and yeah. uh, all those type of things. So with me, I, I didn't take that into mind, because yeah. I just had, I was like, okay, my mom decided to put me in, in a different school, so let me use this opportunity. So, 99, um, I didn't play any sports, yeah. left school, went straight to the hostel, back to the rural So, areas. we passed it two years, what, what, one, one year. year. One year. One year, because all I did, go back to the hostel, play marbles. <laughs> 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 I'm being honest. So, but now, it, it got to me to the fact that I'm like, where are my friends after school? Because hmm. for that, like, that hour, hour and a half. Oh, so um, among uh, friends from class. Yeah, friends from the same grade. They were yeah. never at the hostel. Yeah. And I was always alone. And then I realized, okay, the guys are going to play rugby. And yeah. I was like, what's that? Because the only thing I knew was cricket. Ebola. Hey, forget Ebola. Ebola was only third, third, third season. Shit, you, you, Ebola, you didn't Aye, know. You I, didn't, I could play soccer. But yeah. now it's just that oh, I'm saying shit, I was yeah. more into cricket as well. Because oh, okay. I go out. You take yeah. it in Kuni, yeah. you make wickets. Yeah. You know, I know when it comes to <laughs> you. The only way a boy from the rural areas would have an interest in cricket comes from the part of throwing stones. Yeah. The stone throwing. You know. If you know you got a wicked <laughs> arm and you could throw that shit, <laughs> you're like, shit, that's my, that's my niche. <laughs> so, I'm never, yeah, so that's how it was. And... Uh, it's funny now because I used to watch test cricket. I mm. used to be a fan, sit there the whole day, watch test cricket, enjoy mm. it. And times changed. Mm. See, so now I hate test cricket. I, I, I don't think about watching a test. Nah, the only thing I'll watch is T20 or one day. Exactly. Test, ah, nah. And even one day, like, I don't like watching the series. <laughs> like, maybe World Cup, yeah. You there, you there. Yeah, it's more exciting. But uh, I, was, I was speaking about test matches. I saw yesterday England just came back at um, to ashes. equalize the Ashes. Yeah, that was fucking fantastic. It's the same as the way they won the World Cup, eh? Yeah, because uh, I don't think a lot of people thought they were gonna do it. And well, it, it goes to show, man. Yeah. The sport belongs to them. Besides that, uh, how it is, it's always. Who wants it more on the day? Yeah, I think that's 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 how I n I normally take things when it comes to yeah, sports. Yeah, that's true. Because you can you can have the best team, but yeah. now at the end of the day, whoever wants it more, so whoever the the team that wants it more will win. Yeah, that's no matter true. what happens, no matter how dark good your team is, but yeah. if they are more hungry for that victory, they'll go all yeah. out. So you, you could be in a, you could have an assailable lead Oof. then. Still, people catch up. Uh, there was, there was, there was a, good, a perfect example this weekend. Uh, who were the Stormers? Oh, Western the Province. Cheetahs and, and and Western Province. I didn't perfect. watch the game. The only thing I I know about that game I know is current. Um, uh -uh. Was it Scara? Yeah, it was Scara. Yeah, and but the only thing I know is Scara just <laughs> slapped the ball out of the boy's hands, and it just looked sad. It does, but I must say, as much as everyone look looks at it as being very unprofessional mm. and not uh, not good for the boy, mm. it's it, it, it's one of those things that happened at the heat of the game. Because if 
if you're tired mm. and you have a lot in your mind. I know this, the the Western Province was leading, yeah, but it it, it there are, there are certain times where you do something, and you after a while you end up being like, oh, that was wrong. Yeah. So with Skara, as much as everyone says he was wrong and all that. Mm-hmm. He was man enough to go, to go back after the game, and go apologize. to the kid, apologize, give him a, a, a Western Province jersey. Mm. So, because we, we always see this happening in sports, yeah. but not a lot of people have that uh, thing of going back to that person that they they hurt and and actually see. apologize. So that's how it was. Cause, uh, but I see everyone is taking it. Yo, it's going it Too went far. viral actually. Yeah, I do. But yeah, for me. As much as I know how it's like, I know, I know, I end up getting to that yeah. uh, frustration part. Yeah. As much as people think I'm all cool head. And <laughs> and, and I can imagine because uh, it was a, was it the Cheetahs home game? At, uh, it, it, they were away. Yeah. I think it was. It was in Plum. Yeah, they were away though. That, okay. That's what I know. It, may, it makes sense because like, you know how... Um, if you if you always uh, the ball boys they probably support support the home team <laughs> 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 so so i i can imagine where it could have came from so i understand what you're saying yeah, it's, 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 it's it's just unfortunate that it's it just did, unfortunate that it did happen but for me the fact that he went back to the kid he apologized he gave him a jersey yeah that's that's that means a lot it's true it? that means a lot true. so it, it it goes a long way yeah. Uh, so back to Dan House of Primary. <laughs> uh, after school, you're wondering where your friends at. You are playing marbles. Uh, when 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 do things change? So it was towards the end of the year. Yeah. We had a um, uh, Biliki Rapi. You know the under yeah, under, under, nine, eight, under, under eight under eight under nine. <laughs> so they were like. Let's let's go have a chance. Uh, yeah. The guys must come play. We're playing against BZP. Mm. So I'm like, okay, fine. I'll give. Let me give Rapi a chance. Let me go. So I go there uh, to give you a shock of your life. So I played my first game. What position? <laughs> I was eighth man. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I say, let me give you a shock of your life. So I was eighth man. So I was right there behind the scrum. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> So that's when it started. So I was like, ah, okay. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna carry on. Let me let me see how it goes. Then the next year, I'm like, uh, I wanna I wanna kick. When I went you to wanted, the ten, you I wanna kick, kick. I wanna kick. And but uh, you ate, man, bro. No, uh, that's when season was starting. I'm like, hey, I wanna kick. I wanna kick. Or you just wanted to try. So they're like, okay, if you wanna kick, then you have to play fly half. Mm. I'm like, okay, fine, I'll play fly half. Because mm. I want to kick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I started playing Flav. Um, that's under 10, under 11. Then when I got to first team, uh, I was always saying, I want to step. I want to step in the game. I want to step. I was wearing a scrum cap. I didn't know what was happening. Oh, at, um, the scrum cap was swag. No, yeah. yeah what, you what? know, scrum cap was swag. You, you just put on a bandage, <laughs> not knowing why you're putting on a bandage. But now you put on a strapping for a reason. Yeah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and like I see sometimes some guys are heavily strapped. Yeah, it's it's it, it's it's actually tough, eh? Cause um, you 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 damage a lot of ligaments in the game. It happens. That's true. So hamstrings, you've got your shoulders. A lot of people have got knee problems. A lot of knee, people have got shoulders. shoulder problems. Knee, shoulders. And with Rub- me, as it is, um, I dislocated my elbow two thousand and nine. Yeah, you still wear. But I, ne- I never did um, an op. So that's why I always strap my elbow, but I did the up for my knee. Yeah. Cause luckily. What happened to the elbow? We were playing trials in Mpangeni, yeah. 2009. So took a line break. Um, as I was stepping, you know, you from you played for Mpangeni. Yeah. I don't know why you guys do this, cause every time when it's gonna be match day, you always water the field. No, it, it rains there. Man. No, but that day we I don't. We never watered. So I go bump, step, step, step. I lose my footing. So yeah. as I fell, then I took my arm out. Oh, to to so to, to balance. cushion the. So the when fall. I wanted to balance, then I, I felt it. 
yeah. I was like, okay. So then I was sitting down there. Yeah. The guys are like, Dube, what's wrong? And we're playing trials. So I'm like, my elbow is broken. Trials for? For, for the Natal side. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, my arm is broken. They're like, no, 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 you're fooling around. I'm like, no, <laughs> seriously, it's broken. So yeah. they took me out, went there to the doctor, and they told me I, pro- I tore some ligaments. On, on the elbow? On the elbow. So then whenever I, whenever I go into a, a hard collusion, mm. it pops out. And it's the worst feeling ever. Because whenever it's out, yeah, you get so mis- mixed emotions. You don't know whether to cry or yeah. to keep quiet or laugh or scream or whatnot. Because I always grab it. And you have to and slot it back in. I put it back in. So I feel it even when it goes in. So I'm like, the cringe. <laughs> then I'm like, okay, I'm fine. And it's always like there's someone putting a knife in there. That's how painful it is. But I've, I've got so used what, to the, it. So have you gotten an X-ray or a CT scan? Because I only did it that time. Yeah. Then after that, it was just me uh, icing it mm-hmm. and just strapping it and playing. But uh, is it? it's not just you. Uh, I've rec- I've seen that a lot of rugby players they play with a lot of niggles. Like you carry, you got niggles that you just gotta soldier on, and you carry them for the rest of your playing days. How it goes is it goes on how how the niggle is, how how damaged that ligament is, because mm. that's how it goes. You 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 get to a doctor where it'd be like, okay, you've got maybe let's say you tore your acl or pcl mm-hmm. and it's maybe a grade grade one grade tear one. or something like that so then it'll be like you can still carry on playing because now the thing is if you have any type of injury on your knee you're looking at yeah recovery time is yeah recovery time is, is is quite long could be more <laughs> so now you're like ah, and I'm sometimes it might not heal like i'm not gonna play they might need to over or re-op so that's 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 a, that's the same thing i had yeah because with me that uh the, the doctor was like you you can you can do it later the mm-hmm. op or you do it now. But if you do it later, it's gonna catch up with you. Yeah. But due to the fact that I knew Mrs. Pelser, yeah. Coco Pelser, you know her yeah. from uh, Sarah. Yeah. And she had a, a, a knee replacement. Yeah. So then I knew if you end up going the knee replacement route, yeah. they take off your your whole knee bone and whatnot yeah, and they and put the plastic. Yeah. So I was like, ah, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. So that's why. So I you were supposed to get, be getting a replacement? No, the doctor said if I don't do the op now, mm. then I'll end up getting a knee, knee replacement. So it's going to catch up later. Because yeah. what ends, ends up happening, because my PCL was completely torn. Yeah. This was when when did this 20, one happen? Twenty eleven. So whenever I run, I run, run, run. Then out of, out of the blue, I hop. So it was just happening because my my knee was wasn't operating well anymore. But I I carried on playing because yeah. I just wanted to finish the season. Yeah. It was more of me saying, Ah, I'm okay, I'm okay. Yeah. And then I realized, no, I'm not, not okay. okay. I'm not okay. I'm just <laughs> forcing myself. I'm not okay. You're looking like a kangaroo out so there. Go, and then I hop up like and you ah. Keep hopping. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I used to go, 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 hop, and then I'm like, ah, yeah. this is not right. Then I ended up doing it. So in that time, it's, it was one of the years when I also got an opportunity to go overseas. Mm. But I rejected it because I was like, nah, I'm not ready. Because I knew I was going to do an operation. Yeah. So I didn't want to go there and, 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 and make a fool injured. of myself. Uh, no, because you know you go overseas and you make a fool of yourself. and Because it was then... Okay, I think I skipped a lot. Let's go. No, back no, no. <laughs> it's, it's fine. We have time, bro. Um, if you okay, going back. Let's go back. Yeah, so you under you under twelve now, and you're playing first team. So, yeah, played first team. I still played ten because mm-hmm. that's the only position I wanted to play. That's that's when you really became uh, like a flyer. Like you understood yeah, the that's role. That's when I started talking more because I didn't know how it worked. With me, yeah. I was like, you get the ball, you just pass the yeah. back line. 
and you're the guy that keeps <laughs> everyone behind you. That's that's <laughs> how it goes. That's, so you didn't know how it works. You didn't know how how it worked out. They were just like yeah. get the ball pass, get the ball kick, get the ball to this. Yeah. So like um, and then um, like it, it it gets so emotional when when I always pick up out my primary school getting there to the under under twelve. Yeah. Because the guy who actually took the time to teach me more about rugby, mm-hmm. Mr. House, yeah, the late Mr. House, yeah, yeah, yeah. rest in peace. You know, I'm, it is one of the one of the the only person who I wish could be still around to yeah. see the progress that I've made. That you've made. Because he used to come and talk to me yeah. and be like, uh, the way you play, you make the game look so easy. Yeah. And there's a lot of, th- I know as much as I taught you a lot of things, but you decided to go the extra mile and do uh, other things on your own. Yeah. So I always wish he could see how what I've done. Yeah. But now with what happened, it's yeah, different. It's sad. It, it, it was sad. So like, uh, when I heard about it, it was like, <sighs> life, man. But anyways. So then it, uh, because I was 12, grade 7, mm. then they started the, the big decision. You know, where you're going to go to high school. High school. So wait, I was like... Uh, under... No, I was, I was 12. Did you make the, na- the Natal I side? I made the Northern Natal side. Under 12. Under 12. Yeah. So I, I went to P- Peter Maritzburg, yeah. played there, and then I couldn't make the Natal team. It, was mm. just, it just ended there. So what I hated most, and uh, I still hate you for that. I'm being Me? honest. Yeah, you what, and your what, what, what did I do? You and your stupid school clinical <laughs> primary. <laughs> 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 it was always tough for us. We always lost against clinical primary. Always, we always got a hiding against you guys. Yeah, and then we had to make a decision. So, Mr. But, you know, I, but it, it was a, it was it got better after after we left. Yeah, because we lost. And and mind you, when I was in grade 7, I never played that game. Okay, but it's fine. You you still were in clinical primary. That's <laughs> how it was. That's just how it was. It felt good winning, bro. Yeah, you, guy, you guys you guys were there. <laughs> we were here. <laughs> but now the funny thing is, when, when, when we, we started looking at it, moving to high school. High school. Um, a lot of... We we kind of overlapped a lot of you guys from clinical primary. Yeah, because you there guys were took, took and other primary guys. No, ahead. you were, like the guys. Uh, uh, I'll be honest. <coughs> Sorry, I'll be honest. Um, like with us, like uh, we took rugby for granted, bro. Like to be honest, even I myself, I took it for granted. When, I mean, like even making the under twelve Natal side for me. It was a big deal because it was a big deal to other people. For me, it wasn't a big deal. I was like, okay, sure. So there's nothing major. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if I if I got to SA, SA level, I would have been like, okay. Because I understood that there was the spring box. Um, uh, back then, like the the provincial rugby uh, uh, platform, I knew, I know Curry Cup was around. I used to watch it. But it... It lacked that 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 enticing in, in interest that it has. Like even in a time like now, like if a young kid is still in school, they can say, um, "I want to play curry cup." That's something to look forward to. Yeah. And because you know that's a stepping stone. If you have a good curry cup season, you know you got super rugby. You got chances for super rugby next season. Yeah. And and with with obviously the, then you get closer to the spring box. But yeah, back then yeah. It wasn't the same. And you guys, I feel like you, uh, the guys from your school, they were more passionate about rugby than than the guys from my school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm telling you, it's um, it's Mr. Owls. He was the one who who made us. Yeah, he, I, I, got, he, I got to know that. He gave us school. that oomph. That yeah, yeah, you just play, play, play as a team. Play together. Doesn't matter whether you're an underdog or not. Because he used to, oh, I used to, I used to hate my friend, you know, Piglet. Yeah. So that's even to till today, out of all the scrum ups I've played with, that's the only guy 
I can go and play with any day. Any day. Any day. Yeah. So uh, now no you guys had a good <laughs> relationship. So now Mr. Ellis would be like, Piglet, no matter what happens, no matter what time it is in the game, just pass the ball in front of Tube. If he runs, the whole backline runs. Yo. <laughs> so then that stupid guy passes the ball there. I'm so tired. So you have now to get, I have you to have run to, get to, to the ball. ball. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's how we ended up getting closer together, yeah. getting to know each other because everything made it much more easier for me. Mm. But then we went to under 14, 2004. Yeah. I played with you. Yeah. At when we won the league. Yeah. And uh, uh, don't 14. forget that I was the captain. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> you, yeah, you were the captain. <laughs> Fine. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> then um, when uh, you guys left me, no, we went together to under 15. Yeah, we went to under 15. But Dr. Netling fetched me. No, oh, I remember yeah. I was still 14. So oh, they shit, were like, no, you, you come back, back. Come back to under 14. We so won the league. Went back to under 14. I became captain. We only lost to Ferrum. Yeah. Yeah, we lost to Ferrum. Yeah. That's, but that's, we still won that, the league. That's the, t- that's the same team that beat us in, no, 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 in, not, in first team. No, no, no. Those guys were playing with you under 15. Because remember when I'm... The guys that beat us? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I was... When I played first team, I was 16. Oh, my yeah, first yeah, year. Yeah. And those guys were 18, yeah. 17. So um, then when I was... Gra- when I went to grade 10, I got a bursary at uh, Pine Town Boys Eye. Mm-hmm. Then I left Saran for left. one month. Yeah. <laughs> how, well, how did you come back? No, Dr. Nathan called me back. <laughs> <laughs> Got a call, like, Dube, where are you? I'm like, I'm in Pine Town. No, Dube, you have to come back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, what's in it for me? This was uh, after you had made uh, Nore Natal under 16? No, that was before, because I was still 15. Oh, yeah, I was still 15. So I went, I'm like, uh, what's in it for me? Because I'm getting 75% here. And I ca- he's like, come back. You'll stay for free at the school. And at the, you stay and for free at the hostel, hostel. And you won't, you won't pay at yeah. school. I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> I'm like, Mom, I'm going back to Sarah. <laughs> Everything is sorted. <laughs> You're not paying any any more money. That's it for you. <laughs> I, I I still tell people till this day, like, I don't know how I got a bursary, a sports bursary. You made Natal. Shit, but like, <laughs> that's the thing. Like, I don't understand. Like, fuck, I wasn't serious, bro. Like, you know, if if I could go back and 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 play rugby. Like with this mindset that I have now, shit, fuck. <laughs> yeah. So you mean there would be it would be oh, a I, lot of damage. Yeah, it, it would be a different story, bro, to tell. Because <laughs> like now, nah, I feel like I understand what the sports is and and like what are the, what are the basics. Like with I always tell people this: like when it comes to rugby, if your your game, this is how it works. You build your game from your defense. You could be true. It doesn't matter how good you are with the ball with ball in hand, but if your defense sucks in rugby, it's a it's yeah yeah yeah. I mean, you. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the best defender. You know, that, that, that's, that's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna beat around the push. I'm, I'm not one of the yeah. best defenders. I'm but <laughs> but but you gotta. It's not a sometimes in defense it's not about um um just you know putting in the big hits um putting the guy down cuz he was charging towards you or anything like that but it's about technique and understanding that you need to make the guy that has the ball think that there's no space for him yeah, make so his therefore life he has no choice but to take contact yeah. That way you win because it's a softer blow. But if you're going to be stupid and you're like, you just want to hammer everyone that comes, one, there's injuries, and two, there's missed tackles. And that's a huge fucking problem. Yeah. The one thing that you don't want in rugby is someone is going to miss tackles. Because if you miss catch. a tackle, if it's one-on-one, I see a guy coming to you, I automatically think, okay, um, it's, it's either I must... Look at the next guy because it's probably gonna offload, or you take you take him down. I wait for you to take him down. As soon as you take him down, I, I'm there either trying to steal the ball, 
or something or competing for the ball. But if you miss the tackle, I can't. Pre- no one, pre- no one plays rugby saying, "Okay, I'm gonna stand here just in case Dube misses the tackle." <laughs> Go to France, bro. It's always is. It was which team did he play? We played against. Uh, there's a team called uh, Seju Pontoa. Yeah. Yo, there was this other big guy. Yo. So now, when he runs, his knees are up. So he the only is. way I took, I have to go up in order to take him down because I can't go down. Yeah, he's gonna Otherwise, I'm going to get the knees there on, on the face. Yeah. yeah. So I go up. He pushes me. I go back. He pushes me. So now it's like a ping pong. It's like, move, move. Oh, so you, you <laughs> so holding, you holding on. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, 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 it's just one of those things. For me, I, I, I'm, that's one thing I can't lie about. I'm, I'm not a big hitter. Mm. But I I can slow someone down. Yeah. Or otherwise I mean um, that's 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 defense. Yeah. That's defense. It's being smart. And like I I always see even when we're playing touch rugby at the beach. Shout out to uh Devon Beach Touch Rugby, by the way. Uh carry on, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> You're forgetting something. You're forgetting something. <laughs> what am I forgetting? You're forgetting something. Uh, should I I'm coming guys. No no uh, no 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 you're what? forgetting something important about Devon Beach Touch. Um you it's on Sunday. Yeah. Uh people can come and join us. Um it's free, it's open to the public. You can follow uh Devon Beach Touch on Instagram at Devon Beach Devin Touch. Underscore beach underscore touch. So it's Devon underscore beach underscore touch. Okay. Um yeah. Yeah. Or um, you follow the owner. <laughs> <laughs> or you can you can follow the founder um yeah. of of Devon Beach Touch. Uh, that's that's uh, it's another one of uh, the greatest uh, inter um what to call it innovations that that you've you've come up with. I mean, uh, guys get to meet on every Sunday uh, at the beach and enjoy a game of touch. Yeah. Sometimes it's yeah, it's exhausting because <laughs> the heat can, and the guys yeah, all over bar rope. Especially this kebeng, kebeng, this kebeng, Charles. No nail. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. No nail. Hey, no nail. Best I look at you. Ah, wow, wow, wow. On um chege if we got that. Um 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 chege if we got that thing. Your group. Best I look at that. Serious. Don't get me started about um chege. I don't know what's wrong because I know Rocco has started the, this bad habit of yeah. cheating. I don't know why. But anyways, guys, uh, <laughs> forget about the cheating. We have fun on Sundays out there on the sand. It's always a great time. You can come in. It's a it's a great workout. I, I think so. With the sand, the sand, the running, sometimes the heat. Yeah, yeah, the heat does play yeah. a, a huge role. Yeah, but you were, you were playing uh, contact on the sand recently in Barcelona. <sighs> How was that? To be honest, um, that was the best. Uh, that's one of the greatest thing I did uh, ever since I went to I went overseas yeah. in the last ten months of my time in, in Europe because yeah. I joined up with the uh, SA Wild Dogs. Yeah. Shout out to the guys from SA Wild Dogs. Yeah. Uh, Jared Vonk. Yeah. Uh, Jared, please, uh, uh, they must subscribe. <laughs> ne? Subscribe to this podcast. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. I, I'll, I'll, I'll share the link that yeah. the guys need to know because yeah. I, I wouldn't lie. Even though we were normally coming third in, in most tournaments mm. the, or fourth, the greatest thing was having all the African brothers together. So, so this SA Wild Dogs team, it's it's a group of uh, South Africans that are playing abroad. Not per se South Africans. It's more of all the African brothers who are yeah. who are over who are Oh, abroad. so it's only African. So it's all the guys and a couple of guys from Europe. Okay. So if the guys are keen to come play, hmm. they they pop in. With uh, I think they said last year the numbers were like. Uh, less than 50 mm. but this year there's like over 100 members yeah. who are playing for the SA Wild Dogs yeah. and when you talk about the credit it's a it's a very you know it's an amazing experience I won't lie I always enjoy it because now then you're back to hearing Afrikaans English and 
a bit it, of Zulu. It, feel, it feels like you're back home. It feels like you're home, actually, for that but, weekend. But you're in a foreign land. But you're in a foreign land. Because yeah. speaking French 24-7 is not easy. Because I go there with my Frank English, <laughs> 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 trying to fit in. Yeah. <laughs> so... How, yeah. are, how are the French, though? Are they welcoming in terms of the language? Or are they accommodative, or do they just, like, look at you weird? And like, I'll make this easy for you. Where the fuck does this guy come Let from? me make this easy for you. Yeah. How are Zulus mm. to foreign people? Yeah. You tell me that. Yeah, they, they're very dismissive. So <laughs> Let me start there. If you don't know Zulu. If you don't know Zulu, I ain't you talking your own. to you. That's how it is. That's how French people are like. Exactly the same. So Copy and it's paste. It's like we don't understand. <sighs> they don't understand how, why you don't know. They're like... You don't... Because you, you get there, like, parlez-vous uh, anglais? Yeah. So can you speak English? And then they're like, no. So they don't even they, give they, you a chance. A chance. They, they know English, but they don't want to speak They don't want to speak English. They're like, no. And they're like... Ah, and then so now you have to stumble. So so now what, what I decided to do because at first I didn't understand anything. So now what Did, I did didn't you feel like you were back in Danhausa Primary? <laughs> <laughs> no, Danhausa Primary wasn't as bad because I I I could speak English yeah. at home, but yeah. I even though it wasn't that it wasn't good. that great, but yeah. that's that's the difference. But now with French, it's a totally different language. Mm. So now you go there, you, sp- you have to speak French, mm. and you don't know how to speak French. Mm. I'll tell you my first experience. <laughs> so I got there uh, on Tuesday, mm. the 25th of September. Yeah. And then on Friday, uh, the guys left to Germany. They went to the October 1st. It's a beer festival in Germany, Munich. So I stayed alone for the weekend. Mm. So I went to Burger King. So this is me. I go on Google Google Translate. Mm-hmm. I write, uh, I would like to have, so whatever beggar that's there. Yeah. So I get the bonju and then I say this, uh, whatever it was written on Google Translate. Yeah. Then I'm like, yeah, I've got this. this so you, you right. can read French. Yeah, so you, you, you try. But yeah. now the thing is, the other th- when you speak the a lot of, a lot of pronunciation. words in, in French, there's some letters that are, are hidden. Are silent. Silent words, yeah. So you don't have to say them. Yeah. So I get there. I tell this lady what I want. And then she's like, medium or large in French. So I'm like... You don't know medium or large. Sorry? <laughs> 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 like, um, medium or large? <laughs> so I was like, you know what? <laughs> this is not working for me. So how how did you know uh, what she was talking about? No, because I was like, how did, how did um, you get the order though? Did I I got the order because no, she ended up saying medium or large. Because oh. I did tell her, I'm like, ah, I speak English. Oh, <laughs> she, like you did say, if you, if you're black in France, there's nothing new there. Yeah, they, so they 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 just see just another black guy. He knows Probably French. Sp- he knows French. Yeah, it's the same. It's because I'm te- as I said, it's the same as Zulu. Yes, yeah, like when so you when see you, a, a guy from Nigeria, you verify oh, instead show him shit. So then they look at you funny. But now here's the thing. Let's say like a, a white person comes to mm. to a location. Yeah, and you know how they like they know Saubona Unjan. Unjan. You see, that's yeah. the basics. And it, it ends there. That's why your data bundles get depleted <laughs> after that. So <laughs> after that, she stuck. After that, uh, there's no more data bundles. So <laughs> you're in trouble. <laughs> you, you're out. So that's how it, uh, it's the same with us. You get mm. there, you like, uh, they like, bonjour. Mm. And then you say, bonjour, ça va, something like that. So, mm. like, how are you? And then they carry on. So now when they carry on... They're like, like, like uh, they're initiating the conversation so now, like, now. Then crickets start coming up. Because you don't know what's happening. Yeah. And it's the same experience I had after the game. So they come to me and then they tell me, yeah, bo match and all that good game and whatnot. And then they end up saying a lot of things that I don't understand. So I'm like, okay. And I only say thank you. So I'm like, messy, messy, bugu, and that's it. 
Because yeah. that's all I understood. I only heard yeah. that, okay, you said good game. Yeah. But anything else after that, <laughs> I didn't hear yeah, what yeah. she said. So I'm like, thank you, thank you so, very much, and that's it. So like, you you also with uh, Uluazi. Uluazi Nguam. Um, so that's the only time you get to enjoy, like, you know, proper conversation. It's, it is it is the only time when we get home, then mm-hmm. we speak Zulu. But now the problem is, even though uh, I speak Zulu with Lwazi, mm. it's also a disadvantage mm. due to the fact that as much as I, I speak French with the kids when I'm coaching. So you, you, like you lose out on practice. Yeah, you lose out on that practice session. Con- or that consistency. Because now if... Of being fluent in If in I was French. staying by myself, then I'd be forced to speak French. Yeah. Or if you were you were staying with a, a French with, with national, with French, yeah, uh, with someone who's French, yeah. then I would I would end up learning French quickly, yeah, quicker. So it's not like I'm saying it's a bad thing, yeah. It's the pros it's and cons. Sometimes sometimes it's good and it's uh, sometimes sometimes it's, it's good, sometimes it's bad. As yeah. much as you don't want to speak French all the time, yeah, but you have to practice, yeah. And it's, it makes life easier, man. Um, yeah, uh, it's good. As to, it's good for us to talk about France, but I feel like there's a very interesting part of of your life story that that we just haven't haven't gotten to. Um, you you what you did go to France while you were still in school, 2008. Yeah, and and how was that experience compared to now? Okay. That was a great experience, yeah. <laughs> but in a way, it uh, changed my whole concept when I went back to France now. Yeah, because um, I only went to the Eiffel Tower in May. Yeah, this year, and yeah. I've been there since uh, September. So I was like, I've already been to the Eiffel Tower. Why should I go there mm-hmm. again? You see. So when I went, it was two thousand eight. Uh, how it all started, I was writing my first trial exam because mm. I was school head boy at the, at the time. Yeah. And Mr. Wilkinson gave me a call. He's like, do we listen? There's a team from Devon going to France. I'm like, Menier, I'm going. Yeah. He's like, no, no, listen, it's during your final exam. Menier, I'll write the final next year. I'm going to yeah, France. You've, <laughs> you've, you've, you've always um, never flinched um, when it came to making a decision whether it's rugby versus something else <laughs> like you you've never <laughs> flinched like you are you consistently <laughs> make that one decision it's like ah shit this is what i'm doing that's all i'm doing <laughs> the funny thing is in the space of five seconds maybe because mm-hmm. i think that's how long it took me to tell to tell mr wilkinson i'm going to france mm-hmm. regardless of the situation from yeah. him telling By the me way, mr wilkinson was our first team coach He's Head of a coach, probably the the for me, um, he's the best coach I've ever worked with or been coached by. I mean, they they still principles that I use today, uh, especially at my training sessions, because um, you know how it was, bruh. Um, <laughs> we never did any weight training. The only thing Wilkinson knew is to make you run, paintain, 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 go there. Run with the log. <laughs> run with the log. Monkey pass. Run through, <laughs> bash through, bash tires. Yeah. Uh, go, climb a wall. And tire flips. Yeah. So, but for Mr. Wilkins until today, he's my personal mentor. Mm. So whenever things go tough, I always uh, talk to him. Talk to him. Because mm. we're still in contact. So yeah. I, would, I, sp- I even saw him uh, on Friday. Yeah. I was with him. So... When he spoke to me, this is what went through my mind in a space of five seconds. Yeah. And even when I explain this, it's more than five seconds. So I don't know how all of this went past my mind to make me give a decision. The time when he told me that um, the tour clashes with my final exams, yeah. what went through me was, if I miss this opportunity, what will I say when I'm in my deathbed? And I look back to everything I did in my life, mm. and I realize that I missed out on an opportunity to go overseas. 
and I didn't and, go. And play. So that's what went that through love. in that five seconds. And then I was like, no, I'm going. Yeah. So <laughs> that's how I ended up deciding to do that. Yeah. And at first my mom was like, no, you can't go. Mm. And then she was like, no, fine, you can go. Because she realized that if she stops me from going, during the final exams, I'll be thinking about the fact that I'd be in France now. Mm. And then I end up failing. So now I didn't go overseas. And I didn't you pass didn't my pass. exam. Yes. So that's the other lucky part that I, ha- I have. Yeah. Your, your mom has been very... M- my your, your, your family have, have been very supportive of you. Yeah, everyone from my aunt, my dad, they all support me. Yeah. With whatever I do, whatever decision that I make, they're yeah. always on my side. How, how much of a benefit has that been for you? It's... It, it 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 makes life easier yeah. so uh, i'll say it's a it's it's a great advantage to mm. the fact that you know even though you take that decision of whatever you do mm. and things don't go right mm. you've got your family to support you mm. unlike if you take the decision and your family is not on your side yeah. and things don't go right then you ha- then you get that amazing sentence yeah. i told you so Oof. You shouldn't have done that. That's the one. What thing. were you thinking? <laughs> you know those those <laughs> sentences that you get. I told you so. That statement, they're like, "What are you thinking?" and whatnot. Yeah. So with me having my family on my side has made things a lot easier. Yeah. And that gives me the the boost, that moral support. That okay, I'll go all the way. Mm-hmm. I've got the family behind my back. No matter how hard it go, it, it goes. They're still there to push me. Mm. So, so even now. So you don't need to worry about um, um, people that are uh, hoping that you're failing or they're waiting to tell you uh, that we told you it's going to fail. So with that, you know, when you've got your family on your side, mm. everything is good. Now, the only thing you need to do is to prove yourself mm. and make sure you, you, you do whatever you can do at the best of your abilities. Mm. And there's not the thing that uh, my mom doesn't want me to do this, so mm. let me prove it, let me prove them wrong and that I'm capable of doing, of it. doing it. Yeah. Then yeah. So then you lose direction. Then you lose direction because now you wanna prove to everyone else and your family that you can do this, and it 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 gets harder when yeah. when you get to that point. And and speaking about proving proving, you did prove uh, uh, the point because. Uh, you played uh, for the for the UK ZN team that won the Varsity Shield. How was that? <laughs> it was a it was a really great experience. Yeah. To be honest, but there was a huge shift. Yeah. Because that year I had to move from fly off to fifteen. Yeah. Where with the presence of Ini Ratebe, yeah, Sharks player, and as the under twenty player, yeah. so now. Um, what happened was, I was like, I'm gonna play ten. Yeah. And the coach came to me, is like, Dube, if I were to put you on fifteen, what did you say? Then I knew that uh, you, you you can't compete with a guy who's contracted at the Sharks. Because <laughs> 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 if, if, if that's that's the mindset you have, <coughs> you're gonna warm the page. Yeah. For a good long time. So then I was like, Coach, if it's gonna help the team, it's fine. I'll yeah. play fifteen. Yeah. <laughs> but I. I it's it's that, one of those that's, years. That's, that's when you first shifted to fullback. It was my second time because I started when I was playing in Czechs yeah. after high school. Yeah. Um, it was a great year. It was a phew, amazing year, honestly. Because yeah. till today, that's what I keep thinking about. But I had you know, not not in a bad way. I had terrible wings. Yeah. We had the the best back three. Yeah. Me as 15 and my two wings, the best back three. But the guys were terrible in a good way with the fact that you kick the ball at the back, I chase the ball. Yeah. As who, I'm f- who were the wings? I had uh, Tobegane Skin yeah, on one skin. wing. I had Shane Macombe mm. on the other oh, wing. Yeah, yeah. So um, whenever I turn around to pick up the ball, mm. uh, let's say I pick up the ball here, yeah, the defender is like seven meters away from me. Yeah. The guys are like, do better don't worry, you've got time. So, <laughs> <laughs> so when you hear that, then you you, you relax. Yeah. Then I you pick up the down. ball. As soon as I turn around, the guy is already here. Yeah. So 
I always beat the first guy, so I stab him. Yeah. They're like, yes, let's go, let's go. So yeah. I'm like, you guys need to stop this because now you're always putting me <laughs> under pressure. Like, no, 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 we want you to stab that guy so that he never does it again. <laughs> so he doesn't come <laughs> chasing again. <laughs> so that's how it was. So uh, that year we, we came third yeah. in the league. Uh, we won the Varsity Shield. It was one of the best years after after high school, from 2009 yeah. at, at school, 2015 was the second best year I had yeah. when it comes to, to rugby. Yeah. Because we ran everything. We could even run from our own try line yeah. if we have to. That, uh, that was a super team. I, I watched your final game and there was nail biting. <sighs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's one of the games I also don't want to talk about. Because yeah. <laughs> I smashed that pole. <laughs> when I was going for that penalty <laughs> kick, I was like, I know when you're closer to the poles, you 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 you, you tend to we, as a kicker, we yeah. tend to miss when yeah. it's closer to the poles. But you get and then you get those hard ones. Yeah, it, those. Then th it just doesn't make sense. Th no, here's the thing: with the hard ones, you know, even no one expects you to score them. Mm. They understand that you're missing them, mm. and then you end up you end up slaughtering those hard ones. Yeah. And then the easy ones, everyone is like, yeah, this is easy. Mm. But it's, it's, it's one mindset that every kicker goes through. Because mm. as you go there to kick, you, you look up too early because you're like, this is easy. Yeah. That's where you miss. It's, but you got to keep your head down. It's something <laughs> that you keep telling, you, you tell yourself all the time, keep your head down until you strike the pole, then yeah. only you look up after you follow your foot. Yeah. But you get there, you're like, this is easy, it's closer to the pause. Then you look up, Ellie. That's one technique <laughs> uh, that I don't understand about kicking. It's like, but the ball, I'm not sending the ball. <laughs> I'm, I'm sending it over there. Like, don't you want that? <laughs> no, but then obviously with the whole kicking technique, um, if you actually try it, like kicking with your head down, even if you're not a good kicker, but you, if you try it, you understand why. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the same as golf. Yeah. Same in tennis, same in cricket. Your eye has to be on the ball until you strike the ball. Mm. Then only you can look. Then you only you can look where you wanted to take the ball. Because mm. once you look up, it's the same as. Here's a perfect example. I'm looking up now. I wanna take the the the, the bottle. Yeah. So that's how it is. If you look there, you can't. You won't. But yeah. if you look at the bottle, then you take the bottle. That's and how it is. And then you look up. Then you can do. Yeah. You see, so that's how mm -hmm. it is. So yeah. it's the same as kicking. Because yeah. once you look up, you don't see where the pole the goes. Because yeah. as, so, as soon as you drop the pole, it can change direction. Mm -hmm. So let's say the pole was facing up. Mm -hmm. So when you look up, the pole changes direction. Then you slice it, it goes it out goes just up. here. Yeah. Not there. But if you look at the pole, then you see the, where it's landing, and then you kick it easier. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, it's, it looks easy when mm -hmm. you do it. But... That I feel like that's that's one skill that um, uh, black flyers. I don't mean to be, but like I feel like black flyers. They don't focus on the on the kicking as much as the like. Uh, not I, I don't think it's a race thing, but I feel like with us we worried about ball in hand. So if you're a fly off and you got a good pass on you, uh, you can open up spaces. That's it. That's just that's the only thing, and and we forget that y if the kicking is not on point as a fly off, you know you're not a first option. If there's a guy that's good at kicking, and his passing is average, a coach might tend to lean on the guy with the kick. With with that, um, it's 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 very important as a fly off to get your basics mm. up to standard, because on our basics uh, as a ten. Mm. is communicating with the team. Yeah. So we've got communicating. You have to know how to pass mm -hmm. left and right. Even though it's not going to be those 20 meter passes, you don't have to pass 20 meters. Yeah. But as long as you know right. how to pass left and right, yeah. that's that's important. Um, kicking, out, kicking out of hand. Yeah. That's, that's, that's very a, that's vital. That's very vital. Because... Just yeah. kicking for poles. Anyone can kick for poles. Even a prop can kick for poles. Yeah. That's fine. It's not necessary. But kicking out of hand, 
that's vital because yeah. now you've got a five meter scrum we have to get out of our half yeah so this means play, yeah. whenever we're there you are shifting to a different position someone so goes to the 10 position just to kick the ball out and it, it, it's sort of like it it broadens the game plan like there's too many things like yeah so now you keep swapping around yeah. it's, it's it's always confused it confuses people a lot yeah. so it's those are the things that as a 10 you need to know how to do but not only as a 10 mm. for me I, I feel like if you're backline player from 9 to 15 you have to know how to kick out of hand yeah because now let's say they kick the ball and you are on your own at the back what are you gonna do yeah that means now you have to you have to run it. Because now you look up, you see there's five guys coming up in a line and you can't kick. There's no space. So now you take the ball, you put it under your arm. You, you want to run around people. <laughs> or you want to, you, or you take a chance and try and kick. You, you see? put it down. Uh, and then you kick the ball, it just goes out just here, <laughs> yeah, just here. Yeah. <laughs> and on the other hand, there's a, um, a stain waiting for the ball. And he starts running, Never forget. stepping. The thing is, <laughs> yo, ah. Uh, <laughs> so now there, or you kick the ball and it's not a good kick. It yeah. just goes over the first line. Mm. Then you get someone running into the pole. You're on your own. Yeah. All your players are offside. Yeah. Then, yeah, we just attack. So it's one of it's the things that I learned in yeah. my rapid career. Because yeah. the same now, because I also do coaching. Mm. What I learned is... So you're also coaching in France? I'm also coaching in France. Okay. What I, what I learned through my rugby career was that mm, as much, not all coaches are the same. Yeah. But some coaches tend to be too soft mm -hmm. to players. So as much as you don't have to shout all the time, mm -hmm. but it's also not right telling your players that they are doing well, even though they're not performing. Because mm -hmm. me as a kid, if I'm being coached and... Let's say half time we're losing twenty one nil, for example. Mm -hmm. And you come to us and to an average team, not a good team. And then you're like, boys, you're doing well. As a player, I'll carry on with what I'm doing because the coach says I'm doing, doing well. well. But now you it, it has to be po positive critics. Yeah. You tell the boys, boys, you're not playing well because you're doing this and that and that wrong. Let's fix it. Then the boys can fix it. Because now they see, okay, coach says this is the mistakes we're making, so this is what you need to sort out. Because mm -hmm. once you say, boys, you're doing well, then you're like, ah, coach is happy the way I'm playing. Yeah. Let me carry on. <laughs> Let me keep it. And then we lose yeah. badly. So that's what I've been telling the boys. Yeah. Uh, I, I tell them, okay, boys, you're not playing well. This is what you need to fix. Then we fix that. Then things are okay. Yeah. If you're playing a good team and we're losing at that score half time, then there's nothing you can say as a coach. Because yeah. whatever... You, if the boys are doing everything they can, that team and is just too good. Too good. Too then good. sometimes the, the 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 opening is too is too. You're good. like, ah, okay, there's nothing I can do here. Yeah. So, what 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 I always tell my boys, mm -hmm. whether I was still coaching at DPHS under mm -hmm. nine, whether I was co with my third team at DPHS, or with the under sixteen boys I coach in France or mm -hmm. under eight or under tens, is that. Whenever you have a ball or whenever you're playing mm. and you feel like you've got the ball in hand and like, I'm 100% sure I'm going into that gap or whatever you want to do, you are positive that this, this is my decision. Mm. I'm going for this. As a coach, I'll support that because mm. I see, okay, that's, this is how you felt. Because mm. for me, standing on the side, mm. I don't see what you see. Mm. It's totally different. Yeah. And that, that's what a lot of coaches get wrong. Because we want the boys to play the way we want. Mm. But now, what they see on the field is not what we see off the field. Yeah. So if you 50-50, it doesn't work. But if you go 100% and you're like, I'm going through that gap and they tackle you, it's fine. Yeah. But your teammates have to support you from that. Yeah. So I always tell them, if you make a mistake, it's fine. Mm. But now that mistake must be something that you felt that this is what I'm going to do. Yeah, you, you, you initially you believed in yourself. You this is what I'm going to do. It, and yeah. that's fine. Yeah. But now if you hesitate, you don't know whether to go or not, then I, I end up losing myself. I'll be <laughs> like, what were you thinking? Yeah. You see? So it's, it's, it's all those things yeah. that we, we have to put the boys in the right direction. Yeah. Not just tell them, no, you do this, you do that. Yeah. 
And then what you say the boys must do, if it's not working for them, they're like, no, 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 you're not listening. You have to do this. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't work like that. Um, I just wanna, oh shit, ty that's time. Yo, okay, never mind. Um, here, quickly. What's the, the like now, let's say there's another party saying, do the stain, who's in, still in high school, is passionate about rugby, and um, they would love to pursue, pursue a career in rugby. Um, is it one, um, is it feasible? Is it, is it possible for one to have a career in rugby, irrespective of the background that you come from, especially if you're black in this country? I feel like that's it's more important for us to address those issues because they touch more in f f like in our communities that that we come from. Um, what and 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 also, what advice would you give a young Patisani Dube that's out there? A perfect advice to give um, the the boys who are growing up who mm. want to play. One thing is that you have to be passionate about what you do. Mm. So whatever you do, you have to believe in yourself. Mm. No matter how, how hard how hard it gets, you have to keep pushing. Because mm. as the famous words say, nothing comes easy. Yeah. If it's easy, everyone can do it. Yeah. So that's that's one thing I can say. Mm. I'm living proof. I, it, it took me a long while, a long time to go overseas. Yeah. But now the problem is, I just enjoyed playing the game, so I kept on going, going, and yeah. boom, I got the opportunity. Yeah. And number two, education is very important. Yeah. As much as I know, I know that's what uh, parents always say. Mm. But not saying that you um, you have to forget about everything else. Mm. But you need to have something to fall back to on. fall back on, because with the sport you play. Mm you got up until 32, 34, mm. then you're done. Yeah. Then what next? Perfect example is a lot of soccer players. As yeah. soon as their soccer careers are over, yeah. they have nothing to do after that. It's like so stuck. it's better if you play and maybe you are business smart mm. or there's something you, you did with study. the money you, you're studying you got. Or, something. or you're studying. Because yeah. now you look at guys like a lot of ex rapid players mm. they've got hotels farms they've got farms they've got bnbs mm. so let's forget about farms because mostly the farm part is for yeah. parents yeah so now <laughs> the the more important part is yeah it's inheritance the most important part is the the business side yeah so maybe someone's owning trucks now yeah so those are the type of things that you need to be smart about. Yeah. On what are you going to do when your rugby career is over? Yeah. What relationship have you building through your rugby career? So what I'll say is just that if you see yourself that you enjoy what you do, mm -hmm. if you enjoy playing rugby, mm -hmm. then do whatever you can do to get your skills up do whatever you can do to finish high school with the high with high standards mm. and then if the opportunity to go overseas opens up take it with both with both hands mm. get there do whatever you can do so make friends experience yeah. make memories cuz i think that's 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 the most important part about life mm. wherever you go you have to make memories mm. Cause and make connections. Make connections. Because with making, making memories, that's what lasts the most. Mm. We've got the tendency of go, we go overseas, we're just going to save money, come back to South Africa, that's it. Take pictures. You, you, don't, you don't travel or whatnot. Yeah. So uh, for me, I, I did both. Yeah. Went overseas, I traveled, I saved. Mm -hmm. It worked out. So now you go, wherever you go, you have to learn Mm. There's a there's a lot to learn going overseas. Okay. So now when you look at someone like me, I've I've got a bad tendency. That I, that's what I say, which is not bad. I've got um, my personal goal. Mm. When I was telling my friends, they were laughing at me about this. I've got a personal goal where once a year I have to go to a place that I've never been to. Yeah. Doesn't matter if it's local or international, but that's where I, I have to. Do, that's where I have to go. Yeah. That's one. I have to 
at least be on a plane once a year. Yeah. Which is quite funny, but that's how it it, it was. <laughs> I have to at least be I have to have to sleep at the hotel at least once a year. <laughs> you see. So th- these are these are, are, are the type of things of those small goals that yeah, that you set for yourself. That I set for myself. Yeah. It's reachable, yes, but at times it's it's not as easy to get there. Mm. I'm a I'm a rural I'm a rural boy. That's why I grew up. Yeah. So we always make fun of people's goals, even though they are small. Because yeah. to you, like ah, that's easy for it's, me. Yeah, well, it seems not important to you. So that's how it is for me. So and there's a perfect saying that says, never make fun of someone's passion. Yeah. Because you never know if that's the only thing that keeps them alive. True. Because a, so a true. lot of people li- love to laugh at, at, at what others do. Yeah. But little do they know that that one thing that they are very passionate about is the same thing that keeps them out of trouble, mm. that keeps them alive. Because mm. we hear a lot that people are dying from depression. People end up uh, committing suicide. Because yeah. there's always that unnecessary pressure yeah. that they get from others. Mm. So that's just what that's that's what I, I, I can say. Wow. Um that, that's very impressive, uh Dube. Uh man, it's been great chilling with you. Uh you going out to France when next week? Yeah next week I'm going uh, back. You're going back. New club, new home. I'm I'm new moving season. I'm moving into Paris. So yeah. wow <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big more, city life. <laughs> more, <laughs> more friends for you. Yeah, yeah, m- more French. So I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to enjoy my my time in South Africa one more t- for the last time. Because mm. uh, ever since I got back, I've been eating a lot of force. Yeah. There's no force over there. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so wherever I go, if I go to spare, please add force. Yeah. <laughs> they laugh at me whenever I say that. Yeah. So yeah. Th- it's 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 very different eh, yeah. when it comes well, when it comes to food and all that. But um, where people can follow you on social media, at Instagram. What's so your handle? People can follow me on Instagram mm. at C Party Sene. Yes. So S I P H A T H I S E N E. Yeah. That's my Instagram handle, and on Facebook it's C Party Sene, Stay in Dube. So yeah, that's where you can get me. Twitter. Twitter is at Stain Tube. Mm. But uh, uh, sometimes I forget about my Twitter account. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm being honest, but, uh, but normally I do post and mm. yeah, so and, and so you update you you update people there on what's what's happening on your career, on your time out there in France. Yeah, that's that's uh, normally face Facebook and mm. and and Instagram. Yeah. That's where you get everything. Me going overseas, traveling. Yeah, that's where I, okay. I all girls get the credits of you always around. <laughs> 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 Let's shut this down uh, quickly before we go. What are the cha- what are our chances at the World Cup? Sum it up quickly. Uh, I'll say eight, 80%. Yeah. So if the Springboks go all out, they can take it. Yes, you think we can bring it back home? We can bring it back home. But now, as I said earlier on, it's on the day. Yeah. That's who wants it the most. Who wants it the most on the day? They can take it. Wow. Anything is possible. Thanks, Mr. Dube. Uh, it's been great chilling with you. Um, Thank you for inviting me. Thanks for coming, bro. Thanks, bro. Uh, <laughs> peace, man. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs>